This is a tutorial on how to solve systems involving three variables. Now this is actually very similar to how you would solve a system with two variables. So we could still use the substitution and elimination methods, but we just have to keep in mind that there's an extra variable that we need to take care of. So let's take a look at some examples of how we could do this. So first of all, here with example one, we have a system with three equations and each having three variables. Now we, in particular we want to solve this system using the substitution method. So again the substitution method is when we isolate one of the variables and then substitute it into the other equations. So let's start off by taking the top equation and isolating the z. So if we have x plus y minus z equals zero, we could isolate the z by adding it to the other side. So then it's all by itself. So it'll cancel on the left, and then we add z to the other side. So we're left with z equaling an x plus y. Now that we know that x plus y is equivalent to z, we could just plug that expression in to wherever we see a z variable. Since we got this from equation one, let's plug it into equations two and three. So we have our second equation, which is x plus two y plus z, where z is x plus y. And then that's gonna equal eight. Now if we simplify this real quick, we have an x plus another x, which gives us 2x. And then we have a 2y plus another y, which gives us a positive 3y. And then that's all still going to equal 8. So there's our new second equation after plugging in our z value. Now let's plug in the expression for the z in the third equation. So we have 2x minus 3y plus z, where z is x plus y. And that's going to equal negative 1. So now let's simplify again. So we have a 2x plus x, which leaves us with a 3x. And then we have a negative 3y plus y, which gives us a negative 2y. And that's going to equal negative 1. So now here's our new third equation based on our expression for the z value. Now if you look, you may notice that we're left with two equations with only two variables. So we could actually use these two equations to find out what x and y are. So now let's solve this system using the substitution method. So let's take our top equation and isolate the x variable. So we have 2x plus 3y equals 8. Now to isolate x, we want to first get rid of the 3y. So we'll subtract that from both sides. And when we do that, we're left with the 2x equals 8 minus 3y. So now to get x all by itself, we just need to divide the 2 to both sides. So when we do that, we're left with x equaling 8 divided by 2, which is 4, minus 3 halves y. So now we have an expression for our x variable. Now we could plug that in for our x in the second equation. So we have 3 times x, which is 4 minus 3 halves y. And then minus 2y equaling a negative 1. So now let's do some simplifying. So 3 times 4 will give us 12 and then 3 times a negative 3 halves y is a negative 9 halves y. And then minus 
2y is going to equal the negative 1. So now let's keep all the y's on the same side. So let's get rid of this 12. So we'll subtract it from both sides. Now that leaves us with a negative 9 halves y minus, I'm going to change this 2 to be a 4 halves y so that they have the same denominator. And then equals a negative 1 minus 12, which is negative 13. So now let's combine the y's together. A negative 9 halves y minus 4 halves y will give us a negative 13 halves y. And then that's going to equal negative 13. So now to isolate the x, we can multiply it by the reciprocal of this coefficient here. So the reciprocal of negative 13 halves would be negative 2 over 13. Now since we multiply that on this side, we need to multiply it on the other side as well. So the 13 on top will cancel the 13 on bottom. 2 on top will cancel the 2 on bottom. And then negative times negative leaves us with a positive y. And then 13 on top will cancel out the 13 on bottom here. And then a negative times a negative 2 gives us a positive 2. So for our system, we know that the y value to the solution is 2. Now we can plug that value in to either equation in our two variable system. Let's just plug it into the top equation. So we have 2x plus 3y where y is 2, and that should equal 8. Well, 2x plus 3 times 2 would give us a 6, and that's going to equal 8. So now to isolate x, we need to get rid of this 6. So we'll subtract it from both sides. That leaves us with 2x equaling 8 minus 6, which is 2. So now to isolate x, we just need to divide both sides by 2. So x is going to equal 2 over 2, which is 1. So we know that the solution to this system will have an x value of 1. So now that we know what our x and y values are, we could plug those in to either equation in our original system of three variables and use that to find the z value. So let's do that. Let's use the top equation. So we have x, which is 1, plus y, which is 2, minus z, which equals 0. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3, so we have 3 minus z equals 0. Well, to solve for z, we could just add the z to the other side. So when we add it on the left side, it'll cancel out. Then we need to add it to the right side as well. So that leaves us with 3 equaling z. So in other words, the solution to this particular three variable system is going to be at x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3. Now with example 2, we want to use algebra to check to see if the solution we got really is the solution to the system. So we want to plug in our x, y, and z value into this system to make sure that everything checks out. So again, we have our x plus y minus z, which should equal 0. So we have x, which is 1, plus our y value, which is 2, minus our z value, which is 3. And that should equal 0. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 3 minus 3 is 0. So we could say that our solution checks out with the first equation. Now let's try it with the second equation. So now we have x, where x is 1, plus 2y, where y is 2, then plus z, where z is 3. Now 1 plus 2 times 2 is like a 1 plus 4, and then plus 3. 
So 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 3 gives us 8, which is what we have in the second equation. So we know that the second equation checks out as well with our solution. Now let's plug the values into the last equation to make sure. So we have 2 times x, where x is 1, minus 3 times y, where y is 2, and then plus z, where z is 3. Now if we simplify this, 2 times 1 gives us a 2, and then minus a 3 times 2 is the same thing as subtracting 6, and then plus 3. Well, 2 minus 6 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 3 gives us a value of negative 1. And that is what we get for the third equation. Now since all three of our values checked out for every equation in the system, we know that the solution to this three variable system is when x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3. All right, for example three, we want to solve the same system, but this time we want to use the elimination method. Now the elimination method is going to work the same way here as it did with two variable systems. And in order for us to solve with all three of these variables, we're going to need to first do the elimination method with two equations at a time. So let's start off by using the first two equations. So we have x plus y minus z equals 0. And then we have x plus 2y plus z equals 8. Now probably the easiest variable to get rid of would be z. Because if we add it up right now, it would cancel out. So let's do that. So we have x plus x, which gives us a 2x. And then we have y plus 2y, which gives us a positive 3y. And then the negative z plus z will cancel and leave us with 0. And then on the other side, the equal sign, we have 0 plus 8, which gives us 8. So right now we have one equation. Now let's use two other equations from our original system and use the elimination method. Now we could use some equations again, we just can't use the first and second one together. So we could use the first and third one, or we could use the second and third one. Now keep in mind when we do this, we'll need to cancel out the z variable again because that's what we did with our first combination of equations. Now I think the best equations to use to cancel out the z again would be the first and third equations. So let's use those. So we have x plus y minus z equals 0. And we also have 2x minus 3y plus z equals negative 1. So now let's add these two equations together. So we'll have an x plus a 2x, which is 3x. And then we have a y minus 3y, which gives us a negative 2y. And then negative z plus z cancels to give us 0. And then on the other side of the equation, we have 0 minus 1, which gives us a negative 1. So now here is the second equation that we got from using the elimination method. Now that we have two equations with two variables, let's put those together. So we have 2x plus 3y equals 8. And we have 3x minus 2y equals negative 1. Now we can find out what our x and y values are with this system of equations. 
And again, we want to use the elimination method. Now it looks like the easiest one to cancel out would probably be the y variable. But we need to make some changes first. So the least common multiple between a coefficient of 3 and a coefficient of 2 would be 6. So we need to change this top equation so that the 3y becomes a 6y. So to do that we need to multiply everything by 2. And then similarly with this second equation we need to change the negative 2y to be a negative 6y. So we'll multiply everything by 3. Now when we do that, a 2 times 2x will give us a 4x. And then 2 times 3y gives us a positive 6y. And then 2 times 8 gives us a value of 16. And then now with our second equation, we have 3 times 3x, which gives us 9x. And then 3 times a negative 2y, which is negative 6y. And then we have 3 times negative 1, which gives us a value of negative 3. So now we're set up to do the elimination method with this system. So we'll add the two together. 4x plus 9x gives us a 13x. And then 6y minus 6y will cancel to give us 0. And then now we have 16 minus 3, which is 13. So now we're left with 13x equals 13. Well, to isolate x, we just need to divide both sides by 13. And when we do that, we're left with x equaling 13 over 13 which reduces to be 1. So we know our solution will have an x value of 1. Now we could find our y value pretty quickly by plugging this x value into either equation with our two variable system. So let's just use the 3x minus 2y equals negative 1. So we'll have 3x where x is 1 minus 2y equals negative 1. Well 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2y equals negative 1. Now we can subtract the 3 from both sides and that leaves us with a negative 2y equals a negative 1 minus 3 which is negative 4. And then now if we want to get y by itself we just need to divide both sides by a negative 2. Now when we do that, it'll cancel out on the left side, and we're left with y equaling a negative 4 divided by a negative 2, which gives us a positive 2. So now we have the x and y values to our solution. Now if we want to find the z value for the solution to the system, we need to plug our x and y value into any equation in our three variable system. Now, just because it's probably the simplest, let's use the top equation. x plus y minus z equals 0. Well, we have x, which is 1, plus y, which is 2, and then minus z equaling 0. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then minus z equals 0. Now, if we want to solve for z, probably the easiest thing to do would be to add it to the other side. So when we do that, we're left with 3 equaling z. So that gives us a z value of 3. So the solution to this particular system is when x is 1, y is 2, and z is 3. And if you notice, these are the exact same values we got with example 1. So it doesn't matter which method you use, they'll give you the same result. It's just up to you to choose which one would be better for the situation.